All right, let's uh, read the passage first. In the future, hydrogen may form a significant part of our energy systems. Today, it is most commonly uh, today it is mostly used in oil refineries and fertilizer. But in the future, hydrogen could power our cars, heat our homes, and fuel industry. A recent McKinsey study suggested that in less than 25 years, hydrogen could account for 18% of global energy consumption and reduce carbon dioxide emissions from current levels by some six gigatons. Which of the following sentences will most logically complete the above excerpt? Read the question carefully. Right, let's see the options. Germany unsuccessfully experimented with trains fueled by hydrogen. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to one fact that the question says, complete the above excerpt, not what will come next, right? So the option which should come uh, here after the uh, current last sentence of the incomplete paragraph, right? Should complete the paragraph. Suppose the paragraph has the original paragraph from where it was taken, right, had six lines, right? And say this excerpt only has three lines, then the line, the sentence which would come next, by line I mean sentence here, right? So suppose the original paragraph from the article where, or report where it was taken, the paragraph had six sentences. Here we are at the third sentence and that is incomplete. This is the third sentence then whatever comes here would be the fourth sentence. It necessarily wouldn't be a paragraph concluding sentence, right? It would not complete the paragraph. It would be the just the next sentence in line. And such questions are also common, right? But what we are looking at here should uh, tells us, uh, at least from what the question says, that it should complete the paragraph. So the paragraph, at least from what we know from the question, will only have four sentences, right? Or the paragraph would make complete sense, standalone sense in itself, as much as the paragraph is expected to, within four sentences itself. So it's not like the next sentence that will come will be the fourth sentence in a paragraph of six or seven sentences. It will be the fourth sentence in a paragraph of four sentences. So what is critical here is that it will be the last sentence of the paragraph because the question is asking most logically complete the above exit, right? So the question setter has set it with the intention that it should close the paragraph, right? Now let's set in the options. Let's see, look at the options. First, Germany unsuccessfully experimented with trains fueled by hydrogen. First of all, Germany here uh, and trains make this option highly specific, right? And without any context on the, like, you know, without saying anything like, you know, but there can be failures as well. And then we funnel down to more specific examples using the Germany example without any such intervening sentence so far, the paragraph has only talked of the potential of hydrogen, the, uh, uh, you know, the future prospect of hydrogen, how we can, you know, what uh, a greater recourse to hydrogen, uh, switching to hydrogen more and more, uh, adopting hydrogen more and more, right? How can it benefit us? That is the general tenor of the paragraph. It is saying that uh, currently hydrogen is not being used a lot. And if we move towards hydrogen, they, like, you know, it is beneficial. That is the momentum that the paragraph is carrying. So option A does not fit at all there. First of all, it's negative. It's highly specific. Uh, it would make for an abrupt transition, not just an abrupt conclusion, but also an abrupt transition, right? So it definitely does not complete the paragraph. It also doesn't make any sense coming next in sequence, right? So let alone the strict criterion of completing the paragraph, it doesn't even meet the more general loose criterion of being possibly the next sentence because does not follow up from a recent McKinsey study suggesting, you know, this and that, uh, that, you know, it could drop carbon dioxide levels. So we have started to talk about the benefits. It would be an abrupt switch. So option A very clearly is wrong. So that is eliminated. Let's move on to option B. Um, earlier experts uh, thought that hydrogen fuel would be too expensive. Again, similar reasons, right? At least this option is not very specific, somewhat specific, not as specific as option A. I'm not uh, talking of, a, of an instance. Earlier experts thought that hydrogen fuel would be too expensive, right? So we could have said that, okay, this makes sense because although it is talking of, um, you know, something negative, but it, it is saying earlier. So we can expect that after this sentence, there would be another follow-up sentence, which would say now cost-effective ways of, you know, using hydrogen have been devised. So B makes slightly more sense there than option A at least, right? B is somewhat, B is less bad, so to speak, right? So yeah, that is the idea. Now, yeah. So it could still work out, but the problem with it is that we have started to talk about, um, you know, the 
impact the potential future positive impact of green hydrogen uh, of hydrogen right uh, how it can serve as a green fuel how it can help um, uh, us lower our footprint right now talking that uh, suddenly talking of how expensive hydrogen would be would not make that much sense and the most important part is it would not complete the excerpt because this is the last sentence of the paragraph option b can start be the first sentence of the next paragraph right it can uh, start it can open the next paragraph where you know we talk of a separate but related sub point as a sub you know under a different subheader which logically follows from this paragraph but it cannot end this paragraph it would serve as a start, good starting point coherent uh, and in order for the next paragraph right so again option b is eliminated as well because it's not closing it's rather opening we need another follow up sentence so we would need two sentences here and uh, since it is asking to complete the paragraph there is no other sentence here like you know now hydrogen is much more accessible and in any way that becomes a separate thread of discussion right now if you look at option c hydrogen can be made through reformation electrolysis or pyrolysis comes labeled in different colors and you know th this is basically telling you some technical details about hydrogen some ground details as to how hydrogen looks as a fuel and how it works as a fuel some details there right how it is made so that this sort of descriptive uh, um, sentence would not make sense here because we are talking of the potential of hydrogen suddenly getting into the description as the last sentence is extremely out of place and Thing that is obvious as well right so option c does not make any sense because uh here giving a technical introduction of hydrogen as a fuel and uh, its details right after uh just starting to talk about its potential right would be extremely abrupt and would not make sense in this paragraph could have been a previous paragraph or could have been a paragraph you know to like uh sometime later down the line in the article but it would not make sense here, here to be some technical glitch all right uh, sorry for the interruption there was a technical glitch all right so uh we have eliminated options uh, a b and c let's look at option d despite the potential 90 percent of the general population knew nothing about hydrogen technology so uh, despite is a um, word uh, that is used for pivoting uh, from one uh, side of argument to another. Like say you're talking about something positive and then if you want to pivot towards something negative, if you're talking of the pros, now you want to talk of the cons. If you're talking of the advantages, now you want to talk of the disadvantages, right? Then uh, use a, we use a word like despite or say in spite or, or something like that, right? And uh yeah then that makes sense because for now we had been uh talking of the promising potential um of hydrogen right um of the prospects of hydrogen right now uh we could pivot to uh something like unawareness current awareness unawareness about hydrogen like hydrogen is a uh, very promising fuel and could um you know uh, holds a lot of promise for our future and could uh, transform uh, sustainable energy or disrupt the energy sector. But, right, uh, despite its um, uh, poten uh, potential, uh, the current, uh, in the present, the level of understanding, the level of awareness, more importantly, uh, is very low among the general public. Like maybe only a few, uh, uh, only a small fraction of the population understands it. Maybe people from STEM background, maybe people in the energy sector, very few people uh, know its potential, right? So uh, we are contrasting sort of uh, how much potential it holds for the future and how uh, less aware most of us, uh, most of humanity is at present, right? So uh, we could show that gap between those two things. But uh, here again, what uh, uh, should come to mind is that the question is asking which of the following sentences will most logically complete the above except. So, uh, adding a sentence like this which starts with despite and says that 90% of the general population knew nothing about hydrogen technology will sort of be an abrupt ending to this paragraph it was, which was just starting to talk about its benefits it talked about a McKinsey study um, and what the McKinsey study found and never you know sort of brought it to a conclusion never added anything else to that and you know did not wrap it up so from both ends like uh, this is this would again option D would be a uh, would be a good opener for another paragraph right probably a successive one probably one or two paragraphs down the line and 
uh, also because the last uh, sentence in the incomplete paragraph has not got a proper last sentence to complete it, right? So, which would essentially, uh, the, a recent McKinsey study, which is currently the last sentence and will become like, will actually be the second last sentence that has not gotten a uh, closure to it. So both because this sentence is a, uh, in option D, the sentence given option D is a, would be an opener to uh, another paragraph, more suitable as an opener to another paragraph. And also because it would not complete in any sense the uh, thought stream that has been peaked by the uh, second last sentence, which is currently the last sentence, a recent McKinsey study, this sentence, right? So for both reasons, uh, uh, for both reasons, option D is incorrect. It does not make sense in this position. I hope that is clear. Let's move on to option E. The impact of such a change in the energy system would be huge, potentially generating $2,500 billion in revenue globally and creating more than 30 million jobs, right? This makes a lot of sense, right? Why? Because the sentence here, a recent McKinsey study suggested that in less than 25 years, hydrogen could account for 18% of global energy consumption and reduce carbon dioxide emissions from current levels by some six gigatons. So this sentence uh, has started to, uh, has opened discussion about the potential of uh, hydrogen in, a, in an objective manner. So, uh, Today, uh, it is mostly the second sentence of the paragraph. Today, it is mostly used in oil refineries and fertilizer, but in the future. Here, we see an opening of the benefits of hydrogen, the future potential of hydrogen, right? That is something that ties the paragraph together, like uh, the future benefits. So, moving from present to the future benefits is the main core idea, the essence of the paragraph, right? And all sentences contribute to that. All sentences are bound by that essence. So, hydrogen could power our cars, heat our homes, and fuel industry, right? A general uh, sort of uh, introduction. To the benefits and then more specific quantified benefits right to the carbon footprint reduction that is talked about in this sentence and then follows e the impact of such a change in the energy system would be huge potentially generating 2500 billion dollars in revenue globally and creating more than 30 million jobs in fact this such a change refers to the transition to hydrogen so it does well connect with the paragraph like switching to hydrogen from uh, our conventional energy sources, largely fossil fuel based energy profile that we have currently. If as a civilization we move towards hydrogen, if humanity moves towards hydrogen from oil, that such a change in the energy system would generate uh, enormous revenue. It would create a lot of economic value as well as generate jobs. It would generate employment. It would generate 30 million jobs, right? So this perfectly fits in here because it is uh, giving another quantitative uh, benefit quantifying two more benefits than what has already been discussed, right? So we have already discussed the carbon footprint. Now it is talking of economic value. So we have talked of environmental benefits. Now it is talking of economic benefits and uh, employment benefits that would be generated by it. So it perfectly fits in here, right? It builds upon what is already there, follows in the tone, and it provides a decent conclusion to this paragraph by saying the impact of such a change would be huge. So that brings potentially generating this and that. so uh, like you know it does not leave it hanging there that okay i started a list with just one item it adds two more items to it and also you know sort of explicitly states that impact would be huge so you know brings it to a uh, fitting conclusion right so for more reasons than one option e is the correct answer and we have shown why option a b c and d are wrong individually as well so the correct answer is option e Gosh.